Welcome back to the Upper Tier Podcast, the football podcast we bring you each and every week on the Dynamo Podcast Network. Head over to YouTube, smash that subscribe and bell notification button. Audio versions show are available through Spotify, Podbean, Apple iTunes, wherever you pick up audio versions of your shows, you will find us there. Just search Dynamo Podcast Network. Joining me tonight, as always, our resident referee, the man, the head honcho from Hogan Elite Trophy Hire as well. Joining me tonight for a Premier League preview. Thank God that international break's over, Mark. Yeah, big time. It's like a lifetime it was. Oh, I tell you, like it was just... I don't know what that... Poor Kenny, he's in trouble, isn't he? Yeah, big time, big time. But it's a case of the players as well. You know, I was looking at yourself in the end's podcast from last night as well. And boy, what I agreed on a lot of it. But a lot a lot of young lads are going over to England that I know that are very talented, getting chewed up and spit back out. And they're coming back home with their tails between their legs and they're losing, losing the love for football. And we're losing a lot of talent that way as well, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it, I think it's because a lot of the, um, I suppose the support ne- mechanisms here aren't here really anymore. Yeah. That prepares you to go over there for what you're going to face. So you're yeah. kind of going over there blind. I know a couple of lads out of our own club and Greystones went over. They had a couple of trials, I think, with Norwich and other places, stuff like that, and it didn't quite work out for them. And stuff yeah. like that. But years ago, a lot of prep work would have went into that to make sure that would be a success. Absolutely. Like, you look at Gav and Richard. Uh, Gav came from Shamrock Rovers, obviously not blind as well. Richard came from Leeds Slip United. But for them two lads, there's another 50 lads that went over with them. Do you know what I mean? It's, only, yeah. and it's, it's, it's so hard. You know, I understand what they're saying about Kenny and stuff, and... It is a results business, you know, one win in 15. And I know you were saying about the win percentages and stuff like that. And it's just going to take time. They'll probably see him give him till the end of the campaign and see what happens from there. Yeah, I suppose the disappointment really, and I know you weren't on the show last night, but I suppose the disappointment for me really is when we rock up against a Portugal or a Serbia or some of the better teams, Mm. if you like, we, we can raise our game and put on a bit of a performance. Now, I know last night was a draw. But yeah. by and large, I still think it was a decent performance. I, I think the goal we gave away was poor. The way mm. he got away from his player and stuff like that. Yeah, he got a free header at the front post. Like. And Bazuna was very unlucky. He got a hand to it and a stronger mm. hand. He would have put it over the bar. But I, I think on, on the passages of play last night, I think a draw is probably a fair result. Mm. But we were able to stand up to them. And I remember going back to the original Serbia game over there. We had a really, really good game as well. Now, I know we broke down a bit in the end. Mm. But we played really, really well and nice, yeah. and nice football. And then you see us out there against Portugal. We can play really, really nice football. Now, okay, you're going to get punished if you don't if you don't mark the best header in the world yeah. of a ball and yeah. you leave him free in the box twice. You know what I mean? He's going to put the ball in the back of the net. Yeah. But I think overall, I think, you know, and I said it last night, there is kind of signs there of mm. things we're trying to do. And, of course, it's a culture change as well that's needed. Ah, well, I would doubt. Yeah, no, I remember they used that word last mm. night. But the thing about it is, and you said it, you know, you, you can take it, you can try to get a point away from Portsmouth and stuff like that. But if you are, you, you only get one point at home against Luxembourg and Azerbaijan in them two games, you forget about it. There's no no going, no qualifying from there. Mm. Um, one win in 15, it doesn't matter who you're managing, Ireland, Fair, Ireland, whoever, it's just not good enough. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, look, if you're going to play 15 international games, they're not all going to be Portugal or France or Germany or something. That's you know it. I mean? and, and don't forget, our one win was Andorra in the friendly as well. So, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's not good enough. But it's just, I, I can kind of see, and I said it last night as well, like most places he's gone to, he's been successful. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. I, it's, it's not like I think he's a bad manager. I think he's a victim of a lot of stuff that's happened between Absolutely. COVID, circumstance, Absolutely. the FAI. You know, trying to blood new players in, trying yeah. to change the whole ethos of Irish mm. football, really. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's, sure. trying to get, he's trying to get lads to play football. Yeah. And he kind of only has seven out of 11 players mm. that know how to play football. And the others are from that old school, like, you know. Yeah, you know, like, that's it. Like, you look at the job he done at Dundalk. You know, if you had said it a few years before that they had Dundalk fan that they'd be playing in the the Europa, the Europa Cup and stuff, they would have laughed at you. He came in, done a fantastic job. He likes to play that, the three at the back with the overlapping fullbacks as well. But, uh, you know, he had Dane Massey and Daryl Horgan and all at Dundalk. Mm. We don't have the play, you know, James McLean, I know he mentioned him as well last night. He's just, he's not right for that position. Um, obviously, he had a few things going on at Stoke there. They cancelled his contract by mutual consent. But from what I hear, it, there was a lot of rumblings going on behind the scenes at Stoke. 
And um, I, I, from what I heard as well, Wigan were a few people in Wigan were reluctant to actually take him back as well. Mm. Yeah, so. no, he seems to be. Um, I suppose you know without knowing too much about it on the inner side of things, but he comes across as being a kind of a disruptive lad, mm. Um, mm. and he kind of likes to. You know, you can make a statement about these kind of things that he focuses on without bringing it such a highlight to, yeah, yeah. to the hatred of a crowd or a, a fan base or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, if yeah. he, he overemphasizes his beliefs in terms of the things that he wants yeah. to portray. And I think it, um, although I can understand where he's coming from, I think the way he goes about it, he draws the wrong attention. Yeah, yeah. Um, which again creates pressure around the people around them. That's it. Because that Michael O'Neill, I stoke, has, has a big enough job as it is without having to deal with that in the background, then, you know? Yeah. And um, hence the reason they cancelled his contract. But like I said, yeah. there was a few people that I've, I've, I heard that at Wigan that weren't even happy getting them back, you know? Yeah, yeah, no surprise. Um, let's get on anyway. This is our Premier League preview, but great to get your thoughts on the show last night and stuff like that. But you're not being honest. That was a great show, last fair play. Yeah, cheers. So half twelve Saturday. Thank God Premier League is back anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's well. like I said it before the international break. We're only getting into it, and it's taken yeah. away from us. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now it's back anyway, and we've a decent run at it for a few weeks. So mm. we're kicking off early half twelve. Palace versus Spurs. Mm. Yeah, I, I I can only see a Spurs win here. To be honest, um. I think Palace are lacking, you know, something in attack. You know, they're relying on Ben Teke, you know, Oyu. They have Zaha there, but you can't be relying on, on him all the time, you know. Um, but I think Spurs will have too much for them in their locker. I'd say Kane will grab a goal, and mm. I'd say they could easily win 2-0. Yeah, the, the kind of stardom of Zaha there at Palace has kind of waned in the last mm. few seasons, hasn't it? Yeah. It's kind of just... I know I think he had a couple of injuries and he was out and stuff like that, but he hasn't really looked... The Saha of old and stuff no. like that, where a lot of top clubs were really interested in him yeah. for big money. Um, but I would say, I mean, Conor Gallagher was in there for that last game against West Ham, scored yeah, two, he scored really two yeah, he um, doing very well in that two game. Two all against West Ham was a really, really good result for them, I think. Um, but now, like um, Ben Teke, if you're relying on him, you know, he's 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 not he's to me, he's past it, like you know, his his better years are way behind him. He hasn't been as prolific as as he once was, and it, I think we talked about it on the matchup here before. I think Palace might struggle this season. I know they it was a it was a great point they got against West Ham in, in that game, especially away the way West Ham had been playing in the lead up to that game. You think you thought it would have been a you know a, a battering for, for Palace, but they did very well. But it, it, I, just, I just can't see it happening for them this season. Yeah, especially with Spurs there. Now knows come in, he's done a great job. He's so mm. um, organised in terms of the way he structures his team and yeah. his players. Um, and of course, they're top of the league with a 100% record. The only yeah. team in the league with a 100% record. So I'm sure they'll want to continue that and protect that. Absolutely. And, and, and obviously Kane saying he's staying, that's a massive boost for them. That yeah. would have given them a massive morale boost. And mm. he, he, you couldn't have seen Song playing up, up front all season. You know, you've seen it last season when, when Kane was injured. Song wasn't half the player he is when Kane's in the team. So, yeah. I, I, like I said, I reckon 2-0, 2-0 on Saturday morning. Yeah, sounds like, sounds like a good call, all right. Here's a huge game coming up then. The first of the three o'clock, Arsenal versus Norwich. Absolutely massive for Mikel Arteta and probably for Edu, if you like, you know. But um, I, I, I think Arsenal will batter these. Do you? I, I think they'll bounce back. They have to, don't they? They do, they do. I know a few Arsenal fans are saying, oh, West Brom, the 6 nil game. They bet West Brom's under 17th in the league. Cup. yeah, listen, it's going to give the lads who are scoring goals a, a confidence who's going into that game. Norwich, I think Norwich will make it difficult. I think they, I think Norwich might prey on you know the the kind of press that has been going on, the negative press that's been going around Arsenal the last few weeks. I think I think Norwich might have a chance in this game. I'm not just saying that to slag all the Arsenal fans. So I, I reckon this could be a draw, a score a draw. I really do. Um, the only thing again, again, Norwich are one of these yo-yos clubs. Are they gonna, you know, stand the test of time and, and stay up this season? I don't think so. I think they still have a championship squad. I don't think I know Brandon Williams and a few other players has gone. I think they didn't the player go from Chelsea on loan as well. Um, to me, they still have. If you look at the squad, their strength and depth is very weak. You know, I think they still have a, a, the basis of a championship squad, and I can't really see them lasting. But for Arsenal, it's a massive game, massive game. If they don't win this, you know, they're, they're going four or five games without yeah. a win. You're coming into to mid-September and it's big, big trouble for them. I suppose the fear when you look at it really is it, it's hard to see Arsenal keeping a clean sheet, isn't it? Mm. 
And yeah. that's the fear. And it's a question about if they, until they get that settled down, are they going to be just able to outscore teams? Really, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and I think Morris said on the podcast last night, you have Ramsdale sitting on the bench. Who, to me, is a great shot stopper, but he's a good passer of the ball. Where Leno, to me, I, I, I wouldn't have full confidence in him when it comes to his all round game, you know. Mm. Um, to me, he, he can be a weak leak, a weak leak at times as well. And obviously, Jack is suspended for the game, isn't he? And stuff yeah. like that. So. I think it's going to be a tough game. I really I su- do. I suppose if Norwich keep it tight, say for 20, 25 minutes, the crowd might go in on them as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. that might be the policy that they might try and adopt. Now, look, look, listen, I do think it'd be a draw, but you, you know, like you said, you could see, say, Arsenal going out and getting two goals in the first 20 minutes and just absolutely battering them then, you know, but I really can't see it happen. I think it's, it'll be a score draw. A draw would mean he'd have to go, wouldn't it? I, yeah, I'd say so. Um, Who's going to replace him? That's a big question. You know, who's out there that's going to... I know there's talk about Conte and stuff like that. Um, but I don't know what Conte doing there, you know. It, it, there's a lot A lot of it has to go upstairs as well, you know. It's right from the border and all the way down. Uh, you know, you have to answer questions. Yeah. Um, so wh- whoever's coming in will probably have to deal with the same crap that Arteta has had to deal with as well. Well, Conte certainly isn't going in there unless they write two big fat checks, one to him and yeah. one for the next transfer window. Exactly. And Edu would definitely be gone. Yeah. Conte is not going to have Edu in that position, advising him on players. That's it. Way. And he and Conte would go into the dressing room and say, "We spent 150 million during the summer. Where, <laughs> like, where, yeah. where are these players that we bought?" I think certainly he would get more out of them. He'd be better organized mm-hmm. and he'd be more motivated. I think you know what I yeah. mean because he's a proven winner. Exactly, and you know yourself, you know, if a new manager comes into a club, gives the whole club a boost, and they end up in the first game that you know he's playing under and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, if the, if it is a draw that I think it will be, uh, Miguel's in, in great danger. It's certainly one that could potentially ruin your accumulator on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. but we'll address that. We'll have a beat the book show the bookies, on tomorrow, yes. um, and we're also having a Leeds Liverpool preview on Friday as well. Oh, with should be a good one. Uh, next up, Brentford, Brentford versus Brighton. But now yeah. two clubs that we really admire and two managers yeah. that, you know, well, really looked apart. Well, I reckon it's going to be a, a really good attacking game, end to end game. Um, we see two, two Thomas Frank and Granny Potter, two extremely fantastic young managers in the game that want to play the right style of football. Um, I can actually see this being a high score and draw. Um, I think it's going to be end to end. If anyone's going to win it, I think that it's going to be. Uh, from a set piece, I think it, you know a free kick or a penalty might win the game. For one, you know, it's just so hard to separate them. I would say fair play to Brentford, and um, you know they've got five points, haven't they, so far or something like that. Yeah. Um, they got a great point against Villa last week. I don't think a lot of people would have seen it. that. Would have been another one that ruined some people's accumulators, you know. But um, fair play to them. I love the style of football they're playing. Like I said, I've been watching them for a while since Alan Judge was playing with them a good few years ago and they've always played that type of football and it's great to see and then on the other hand Graham Potter we spoke about him at the end of last season what he's doing there you know he's putting up against the bigger teams not just the teams around but where Brighton are he's doing it against the likes of United Liverpool City and stuff like that going out playing that free flowing football um, and yeah I reckon I reckon it'd be a score draw okay interesting that's a good call I think Brentford might just shade this yeah, yeah, because they're at home. That's all I'm thinking. But yeah, I think it's a good shout, yeah. Yeah, like, um, like I said, if it is, if someone's gonna win, I think it'd be a set piece that yeah, will absolutely. that will win the game. Um, obviously, one of the toys of the weekend. Um, you know, a top end toy in the clash: Leicester versus Man City. Yeah, never an easy place to go. This mm-hmm. is gonna be a a tantalising game, I think. Yeah, yeah, and like Leicester, did Leicester be City in uh, the Etihad last season, wasn't it? For the season four. Yeah. They, they, they have a decent record against them and obviously they bet them in the community shield there a few weeks ago um, Vardy's only starting to get into a stride he got the goal and assist in the last game he was fairly quiet in the first few games yeah, and in the including the, the community shield itself um, but then you look look at the bench in the actual former City player if they, they can bring him on and he, he can score goals as well you know mm. City they'll be they'll you know look at what they have. is the Bruyne, the Bruyne and I was back you know so they have a wealth of options there they can choose from. The way the one of the questions is the, the Sterling Grealish thing we found out in the last game again. I know it was against Norwich, but they were still capable of doing it and going out and scoring goals. So I'd say it'd be an exciting game. I, this one is probably too hard to call for me, but I have a feeling less than my sneaker. Good 
much. I know it's a, I know it's a big goal, but I think less than might do it. It's a great shout, in fairness, yeah. like you know, I man. Certainly, yeah. um, certainly shake up the uh, the league if it happens. That's it, and I reckon there'll be only a goal in it. And I do think less than might sneak it, to be honest. Do you think it'll be tight, or do you think a few goals? I think it's gonna be tight. I tight. think it's gonna be tight. Yeah, I think they're gonna try outdo each other, but I think it's gonna be a tight game. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. obviously for a neutral, you're hoping it's an open game, but I don't think so. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, next up, United versus Newcastle. Uh, the the boyhood dream he returns. Yeah. Hey, well, the best news I got is Ronaldo's back and Fred might be playing. So that's, that's great news all around, you know. Uh, yeah, obviously, listen, the, the build-up to the game is all about one man and one man only, but you still have to go out now on Saturday and, and play and, and try to win 90 minutes of football, you know, and mm. that the whole Ronaldo circus is brand up until that, that the, the whistle goes at, at 3 o'clock on Saturday. Oh, I thought you were talking about Steve Bruce, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Legend of a man. Now, I think, like I said, yeah, you have to, when that whistle goes at 3 o'clock, there's only one thing in your mind, that's to go out and win. I actually personally think that he might start from the bench on Saturday. And I think he might play Cavani and, and start Ronaldo on the bench. It could be wrong. I heard it. You couldn't, get, you couldn't get away with that, could you? I know, but you, you listen, it's, it's so sure we're talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nothing, nothing surprised me with that man. But then I heard literally just before coming on here that Sancho had picked up a knock. So if that is the case, it might change uh, his team selection around on uh, Saturday. Um, for, for the game itself, I think we're going to win 3 0. I think Newcastle are going to struggle again this season. I know we mentioned on the matchup that Bruce could be one of the first managers to go. I think last season it kind of suited them that the fans weren't there because you know what the fans are like up there. If you if you're not winning games, they're on your back and they want you gone. So I think he got away with one last season. And um, they've a few good players in there. Joe Willock, we've talked about him before. Fantastic signing for Arsenal when he came in on loan last season. I thought he was one of their standout players. You know. But then you look around, you know, Callum Wilson, he, he can score a few goals and stuff like that, but I, I don't think they have the quality to, to do the job. I, and like I said, I think we'll win 3 nil. But one thing I would like to see on Saturday is a whole, I don't think we've seen Bruno show up at all this season. Um, he, you know, the Leeds game, yeah, fair enough, the Leeds game, he, he got a hat-trick. But against Southampton, he was very, very quiet. Um, so I'm hoping to see him have a good game as well. Yeah, the Leeds game was such a weird game, wasn't it? Really, yeah, Leeds, Leeds yeah. looked they just kind of came back off holidays or something yeah, like that. You know, that's it. Just... Like, yeah, you can't take much from that game. Like, that's how had the game when we needed it, a performance, it just wasn't there from them. And it happened a good few times at the back end of last season as well. So, mm. you'd be hoping and um, be hoping that he can improve. And obviously, another another side of it is as well, hopefully, we keep a clean sheet because uh, Varane and, and Maguire look good together against Southampton. Yeah. So um, hopefully, we'll, and like I said, I, I, I reckon 3 nil. Yeah, I can just imagine Brucey on deadline day going, Jesus Christ, you're not Why, why are this you is, doing yeah. This is I, all I, I need. I won your first league. I won your first league in 26 years, and he's like, coming back to do this to me. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. But sure, definitely an intriguing time. But Brucey, like, I, I kind of like, I know as a Liverpool fan, I never really liked him, but I've kind of warmed to him a little bit as a manager because I yeah. think he's kind of like, He's like he's kind of a likable old soul, really. He is. He, you know? he is. I like his interviews. He's yeah. a journeyman of the management world, isn't he? Like yeah. he's been everywhere. Like, you but know? he really wears his heart on the sleeve. You know what yeah. I mean? And he doesn't pull any punches either. You know. Listen, he's mean? a working class lad from Newcastle, managing yeah. his boyhood town or team, and yeah. like you can't. You know, he, he was a great. We you know what player he was. Like I said, he yeah. won us the league with them two goals against Sheffield yeah. Wednesday that time. You know, and uh, he's he's not a bad manager at all. It's trying, to manage, have, it's trying to manage the expectation of that Jordy fan base. I know. It's, listen, <laughs> even he, when yeah. the team is poor, like <laughs> yeah, so you you seen Rafa in there as well yeah. doing a job and stuff like that. But yeah. they expect to be like in their heads are a top six team. Yeah, or and, higher. Or yeah, higher. That, that's like that's yeah. it. Like they had them few, few good seasons in you know no, probably from ninety four to ninety seven, let's say, yeah. and they're still living off that. If there's any Newcastle fans out there that want to come on and slate us, go ahead, drop a comment in below. But that's we that's can have the way a, we can is. have a chat about all those four trees if they want. Yeah, to. yeah, that's it. Um, let's move on. Southampton versus West Ham. Yeah, another intriguing game. Um, I did worry for Southampton at the start of the season. Uh, they had a very good performance against us. It, but it is one thing, you know, open your game again for uh, to play Man United at home. Um. 
I think Ward Prowse is obviously their danger man from set pieces. You know, he can he's one of the best free kick takers in the league, you know. And mm. um, Vestergaard was a big is gonna be a big miss for them this season. I think him and uh, Bednar had a, had a fantastic partnership at centre half. And uh, they probably won more games as you know they you realize from last season. Danny Ings obviously losing him. You think where are the goals coming from? Mm. You might see where Armstrong's come in. And um, to me, I don't know, he 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 has a lot to prove himself. He done well with Blackburn last season, but we always say, you know, it's a different step up from the championship to the Premier League. It's a, it's a totally different ball game. Um but West and then West Ham are on a, a good run of form, obviously, but they're playing good football. It was a bad result for them, I think, last last week. They were probably expecting to be pal- Palace at home. But, um, you know, I reckon uh, I reckon this be a, a good end-to-end game. But I think West Ham are going to uh, win. Yeah, West Ham just edge it. Yeah, I think West Ham will edge it. Um, like I said, it'd be a good end-to-end game. But I think the, the form Mikel Antonio's in, I think he's the man. He's going to – I think he'll, he'll score a few goals. And uh, he'll be the he'll be the match winner on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, the half five game, Chelsea versus Villa. This will be an interesting test now for Villa mm. in terms of what we think is their credentials for potentially a top six team. Yeah, it's how they stand up to a test like a Chelsea and stuff like that, who are you know in fantastic form and stuff like that. No, um, and potentially you know they'll be right up there challenging yeah. the league. No doubt about it. But how do you see this one going? I think Chelsea are going to win um, by a few goals. I think they're just too, going to be too strong for Villa. Um, obviously, Villa, again, you know, you're, you're taking Jack Grealish out of the team. Uh, Danny Ings has obviously come in. He's, he's done decent enough. He scored that penalty there a few weeks ago against Watford, didn't he? And a beautiful um, bicycle kick as well. The beautiful bicycle kick as well, yeah. Re- it reminded me of Noel Hogan, you know, circa 1990, uh, whatever, in St. Penildas. It was but, uh, when I was on the bicycle. What's the, what's the <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I think Chelsea are going to have too much for them on Saturday. I really do. Um, I think Lukaku is obviously giving everyone a boost into that club. And obviously, Sal Miguel's coming in as well. Yeah, will we get to see him on Saturday make his debut? Mm. Um, you look who they, you know, Mason Mount, Pulisic, you know, Kovacic, Lukaku, obviously, Timo's there as well. Havertz. Havertz, you know, you look at what, what they have. Oh, unbelievable. Yeah. I think I think they're going to be too strong for Villa on Saturday. I really do. I can see them probably winning 3-1. Yeah, certainly, certainly a big test for the likes of Tyron Mings and yeah. um, the lads at the back there. And in terms of Villa, I suppose they're trying to unlock, you know, probably one of the most uh, structured and well-coached defences yeah. in the world. Say. Absolutely. Um, well, like you're right, Mings against Lukaku, that's going to be a big physical battle on Saturday evening. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, I think there's only going to be one winner, and that's Lukaku in that battle. Yeah, it's certainly an interesting one. I think Chelsea will run out and win all right. Um, but I think Villa, Villa will give it a good go. I think with Buendia in there as well, I think he has a chance of doing something. I don't know if Leon Bailey will be back for this one. Yeah. I haven't heard any team news yet on Leon Bailey. But, I mean, Villa certainly have players there that could create a bit of a trouble for Chelsea. But, I mean, I think Chelsea's defence on their midfield, I think their midfield especially will be yeah. very, very strong for them and stuff like Definitely. that. Definitely. And Absolutely. as you said, if, if, if Bella Call Saul arrives... You know what I mean? It'd be interesting to see what he brings another what a, what a deal that was. Like, along with an option to buy for 34 million. No brainer. Yeah, the Super Sunday game, half four, Leeds versus Liverpool. Off the mm. Ellen Road we go. History will tell us hasn't always been a happy hunting ground for us in the past. Yeah. Um, especially when there's fans there. Um Lauren's boyfriend, uh, Paul, he's heading over to it actually. So ah, class. Um, there was a little bit of an injury scare from Van Dijk, but uh, he came out and he said, not an issue, don't worry yeah. about it, not a bother. I think Elliot also withdrew from the England side, but um, as, a, as a precaution, as far yeah. as I know. But then He's all so this bad. other stuff has come out today about this. Um, yeah, I just read about that stuff. before we came on here. Like, what's, what's the story? Is that going to definitely go ahead now? The talk is that the, the clubs are going to challenge it legally, that they don't yeah. think they can do it, especially in a COVID situation. Mm. And that, um, see, it affects a lot more than that as well, because a lot of other players from a lot of other countries as well, 
were blocked and didn't go. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's 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 a kind of a it's a kind of a weird one that it seems to have stemmed mainly from the Brazil and Argentina situation. Yeah, yeah. But then you look at what happened with the match as well. I mean, they had yeah. no grounds really at all. I mean, yeah. the, the the whole thing was a debacle, really. Yeah. You know? So him, he used to be missing three or four players, and they'd be missing Rafinha or something like that. Yeah, they're it? missing Rafinha potentially. Who would he'd, he'd would be, be in big miss? Yeah, but we'll be missing Alisson for me for Mino and Fabinho. Mm, which is mm, massive, but yeah. I, I, I don't think they can make that happen. I don't think that. Can uh, I can't see, it. can't see it happening. To be honest with you, not a chance. Um, in terms of the game, I think if we have two full squads, I think it'll be a really, really good game. Yeah. Um, Bielsa ain't gonna change what he does. We know what his pattern of play is. Um, and I think for Liverpool, um, I think we just need to show a bit more ambition and a bit more yeah. oil in the way that we play and try something different. Yeah. I was really disappointed in the second half against Chelsea. We virtually created nothing. Now yeah, I know yeah. two banks of forward and some of the best in the business at it, but you got to find a way to unlock a team when you have that opportunity. You know, yeah. and it was just. Well, it's, it's always a harder game, I think, playing against ten men. Do you know what I mean? Because you have yeah. to change your your game plan up as well. You know, and especially where it came in the first half, just before half time. You know, it, it kind of puts you off your stride, and you have yeah. to change things around mentally. And you know, I. I think Harvey Elliott, I think he's a fantastic, uh, fantastic player. He's, he's the type of player that should come in in a game like this because he'll just run at them with no fear, you know? Mm, um, but like you said, with Bielsa, it, 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 this guy can go two ways. I think you was going to absolutely annihilate them or it could be a three-all game, you know, that's a good way. Yeah. It's, it's, it's gone, I don't think there's anywhere in between. Um, Le- like Leeds... You look at them, they, they we talked about Rafinha. Bamford, I don't think, has got started as of yet. I, t- I don't think a season has, has quite started, you know. Um, when he gets into free flow, he's, he's, he's fantastic. He can score goals from, from any angle. Um, they, obviously, they have Phillips and, and Harrison and stuff like that. But I just, like I said, I, I think it's going to be a high score and draw. Um, I, I know I'm sitting on the fence. And, uh, <laughs> but I, I think it'd be an entertaining game, definitely, end to end. From a Liverpool point of view, you probably want to see, you know, the likes of Mane and Salah in front of goal, you know, and uh, maybe Firmino come on at some stage as well if, if, if obviously the Brazilian lads are low play. Mm. But, uh, you yeah, know, I reckon, I reckon it's a high score and draw and I, I think it'd be a good super Sunday to watch, you know. Yeah, well, I think for me, you know, they were saying for me, you know, it was going to be, um, he's injured anyway, isn't he? Is he, yeah. I know, yeah. So I think, I think it'll be Jota who will come in. And mm. you know something, I'm not upset with that at all because I think yeah. with Jota, he has a little bit of nastiness to him as uh, well yeah. in the way that he hassles people and stuff like that and all. So he could be ideal for this game. But he gets into great positions in the box as well, Jotted, yeah. you know what I mean? He, he pops up where you don't expect him to pop up and that's where he's got the goals from this season yeah. as well, you know? I think I think, I think, think Liverpool could win this one, um, but I'd like to see them, not the con- constant repetitiveness of sort of Trent and Andy Robinson. Mm, I'd like to see them go through the middle, maybe play Thiago and use his passing range and stuff mm. like that and all. And maybe try something a bit different up the middle. Yeah, You know yeah. what I mean? Because certainly we'd have the strength in midfield. I know Calvin Phillips is in there and all, but yeah. I, I think in midfield, I think we'd be stronger than them if if, if the players are allowed to play, yeah. of course. Um, yeah, I think he'd be the only one stopping, you know, anything happening like that would be Phillips. Yeah, um, but I think I think that I think the... Um, the passing ability of Thiago and stuff like that could literally nullify him and take him out of the game, really. You know what I mean? Where he'd only be a bystander, really, of what's going on in midfield because the ball would be gone by him at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I'm going to go for a Liverpool win on that one. Um, not so much confident, but yeah, I but... think Liverpool will get the job done. And I think this is a good one for us now. This is a proper test for us to see yeah. are we about it. And especially and... by Sunday we'll be looking back at all the other results that have happened. So the yeah. pressure will be on as well. But uh, don't forget, imagine what that atmosphere is going to be like on Sunday there. You know, you know a yeah. packed Ellen Road. You know, he's probably haven't played them in a packed Ellen Road since God knows when, late uh, 2000 or 2001, like, you know. <laughs> since Viduka scored four. <laughs> Do you remember that, yeah? So, I remember, uh, I remember it well. Yeah, so it's, it's the, having the full crowd there for Leeds, that's going to be a yeah. massive incentive as well. But that's why I think it's going to be a, a high scoring draw. I think uh, they'd be well up for it. But if, like, like I said, Liverpool on the day, he could go out and do whatever he's wanted against him, you know? Yeah. Then we rounded out on Monday. Monday, we got Everton versus Burnley. Everton, who are sort of making strides forward under Benitez, they seem yeah. to be... I mean, they're not setting the world alight, but they're certainly making it difficult to beat them. And I, yeah, I, they're plodding was, along, aren't they? I was very surprised at the Brighton result, that um they, they had it so easy. 
Mm. You know, um, yeah, I was surprised with that as well. But well, we know with Benitez, he's going to go in there. I mean, the Mary Gray is after coming in. What a sign that he is in that window. 1.6 million. 1.6 million, like. million or something, you know. Absolutely hit the ground running. Um, and then, of course, with Mbappe talking about going out of PSG, the thought was they were going to bring the Charleston. The in, in, yeah, yeah. But obviously that didn't happen. Um, and Burnley is another team this year that I think you mentioned it earlier about teams getting away with it because of fans and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think they were another team last season that did that and I think this season they could be found out as well. Yeah. Um, but listen, we know what they're going to do on Monday night. They're going to try to stop Everton playing. They're going to bully them. Chris Woods is going to show his weight up around, you know, up front. Um, I just, I think Everton will do it. I really do. I think their, their style of play be too much for Burnley on Monday. Like we were talking about there, Gray, Richarlison, Carvet Leon, you know, I think they're got just they have enough in the locker to win it. Um I, I always just worry about Pickford. I don't know what anyone else thinks. I think he's just even looking at a bit of the England game there, um, he's just a weak link in, in the team, you know. And especially when you have a big lad up front there like Chris Woods. That's it, like did they put himself about that, like. exactly from set pieces corners, he'll he'll put himself on Pickford, you know. Um so I think I think everything will, will win, um, possibly two one. But it be it won't be a difficult to one if you get me. I reckon they go two 0 up and Burnley might pull one back late on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you've you've assembled there the the, the makings of a pretty good accumulator there. <laughs> the map. You've, you've I'll have I'll have to get on it though, you know. Yeah, I'll have to do me any time yeah. score or for beat the bookies. Yeah, big time, on, absolutely. On um, just to let our viewers know as well, we'll be bringing some interesting podcasts to you next Wednesday. I'm heading over to Liverpool for the AC Milan game. Um, so I'll be doing some podcasts over there at Anfield and at various locations uh, around Liverpool so that should be a bit of fun with the Shankly sessions and stuff and like uh, that. if any well, next Wednesday I'm refereeing at Brickfields I'm going to do a live podcast from there so if anyone's interested in coming down there yeah he's going to be wearing a GoPro <laughs> 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 and, and cause as much chaos as possible it's all going to be bleeped out <laughs> and unlike us at the weekend there if you do give away a penalty make sure it's on the penalty spot not yeah, the 18 yeah. yard line. Exactly, you know, yeah. Absolutely ridiculous stuff. I uh, know that'd be a great podcast now next week yeah. from on next Wednesday from Liverpool. Yeah, it'd be interesting kicking off our Champions League campaign. So sure, hopefully, fingers crossed now we do the business as well. Because it is yeah. we are uh, you know reuniting with uh, our friends AC Milan. So yeah. there is history there as well. Um I was listening to uh, what was it there the other day, Hernan Crespo. Uh, oh, I yeah, think yeah. he came out and he says we owe these one, and I was there thinking going. You got us back two years later. Two years man. Give later, a, give yeah. a break, will you? Like, you yeah. know, man, you got your revenge. But yeah, I think we started to just raise the ante. And I think no doubt over the weekend, we'll hear from our friend Gattuso as well. There's no yeah. doubt about that, you know. They'll all be coming yeah. out of Woodward. But we'll, do, we'll, we'll do a build up to the Champions League, so it should be good next week anyway. Uh, be the bookie, you'll be up tomorrow. As I said, the Leeds Liverpool preview will be on Friday. Um, Saturday, I'll be back at it, the Shankly sessions with Dean. So that'll be back, and we'll, uh, we'll have a bit of crack talking about Liverpool. and See where the see where the landscape lies about his unhappiness and my hopefully happiness. Um, but yeah, pleasure as always. Uh, this has been your Premier League preview for this week. Thank God football is back. Yes. International break is over. Thank God. Absolutely. Head over to YouTube. Not for Arsenal fans though. Sorry, go ahead. Man. <laughs> I don't know. They, they got to beat Norwich. They just nah. got to do it. Just find a way, Arteta. Get it done. Pick your best players and do the business. Um, head over to YouTube, Dynamo Podcast Network. You'll find us on Facebook, the upper tier. We're on Instagram, the upper tier. On Twitter, at the underscore upper underscore tier. And you'll get us on Spotify for audio versions of the show. Mark, a pleasure as always. Cheers, another Thanks a million, man. Can't wait to see if this bet comes in. <laughs> <laughs>